Last night's episode of Big Brother and Late in Live are now reappearing. They've edited out Ali's pro-Palestine watermelon t-shirt, which was reported to Ofcom, and they just, like, they wiped out the f***ing watermelon. Like, it's just, that's so silly. Like, you, you, you're not winning anything there. Like, no one is seeing that and going, oh, wow, I'm pro-Palestine now. Like, no, you, you didn't, do, you didn't do anything. I swear to God, if it wasn't for TikTok, like, this would be dramatically different, I think. Netflix responds to activists criticizing Palestinian films removal. These licenses have now expired. A coalition led by Freedom Forward called on Netflix to reinstate 19 films by or about Palestinians that were part of a three-year content licensing deal that is now that has not been renewed. Netflix has responded to the backlash over it removing 19 films by or about Palestinians from the streaming platform in mid-October. In a statement, the streamer said that the Palestinian Stories collection with 32 films was launched in October 2021 as a part of a three-year licensing deal. Those licenses have now expired. As always, we continue to invest in a wide variety of quality TV films and TV shows to meet our members' needs and celebrate voices from around the world. I mean, I get it. I believe it. We urge you to explain your decision and to reinstate every film about Palestinians that Netflix deleted last week. We are deeply concerned that Netflix's deletion of nearly its entire library of Palestinian films will further marginalize Palestinian voices at a time when over 2 million Palestinians in Gaza are being subjected to genocide by the Israeli military. Letter to Reed Hastings, founder and executive chairman and co-CEO of Greg Peters and Ted Ferrando started, stated, after Netflix responded to the activist pushback, Sanjeev Barry, executive, free, uh, executive director of Freedom Forward in his own statement, criticized the licensing deal being allowed to expire. Why didn't Netflix renew the licensing deal under which it carried these 19 Palestinian films? It's a $300 billion company that can afford to renew the license for the movies and films that it cares about. Palestinians are experiencing extraordinary suffering. Yeah, I, I, um, I don't know if this is like uh, directly because, uh, you know, these, these movies and these films were like actually doing uh, fantastic and Netflix like against all odds still refused to renew their licenses specifically because uh, they, uh, you know, didn't want to upset like pro-Israeli people or whatever. Um, I don't know if that's the case. Uh, I can't make that inference here. It, it seems like they just did not renew their licenses. Is this a larger realignment than after 9-11? No, no. It's getting there, but it's not as bad. It is getting there though. But no, I think, I think you see it online a lot more. It's like significantly more uh, insane online where people have the capacity to be as unhinged as they want to be online. Um, but the reason why it's nowhere near as insane is because there is, how do I describe this? There was no, there was no opportunity for naysayers. The um, internet wasn't as diverse and as like, uh, and, and wasn't as like used at the time due to technological limitations in 2001. So there wasn't like other avenues of information. It wasn't as accessible. Um, and also beyond that, it was America that was directly attacked. So, uh, you know, the, the public sentiment was uh, way more primed for Arab hate and Islamophobia than when Israel is fighting against uh, like Israel, uh, an entirely different foreign nation uh, doing all of this is a little bit different in the eyes of the American population. That's why you have like 54% of Republicans that are like, yeah, I'm fine with the ceasefire. What the f is going on here? Do you see what I mean? Like there is no world in which the Republican party post 9-11 would be like, we should do a ceasefire in, in, in Afghanistan or Iraq, right? That's not a thing. And mainstream media was, uh, of course, significantly more powerful in terms of influencing people. Uh, back then, they had a complete, complete hold over the American population. There was no other like avenue of independent information unless you went to like forums or some shit.